Namaste. So now let's look into the fifth and final verse of the Shiva Panchakshara Stotra. So, because the mantra, Om Na Ma Shi Va Ya, the fifth verse begins with Ya, Yajna Svarupaya. Yajna, of course, is sacrifice, meaning any kind of devotional service offered unto the Lord. But Svarupa is an interesting word. Rupa, of course, means form. But sva means the essential or the permanent or the uh, actual form. So the actual form of sacrifice, of yajna, is Shiva. He himself is sacrifice. And so any time an act of sacrifice is performed, Yajna, meaning offering to God, Shiva is present there. That means any chanting of prayers or his holy name or what to speak of his five-syllable mantra means Shiva is present in that act of sacrifice. So all you have to do to come into contact with Shiva is to, you know, Om Namah Shivaya. <laughs> so easy. And the result of the sacrifice is instant. Shiva does not make you wait like Vishnu <laughs> and other gods. He gives immediately because he is the supreme Brahman. He is the supreme God. So all other offerings made to other gods are actually made unto him, but without knowledge. So, of course, it takes some time to get the result. But with Shiva, the result is immediate. Next is Jatta Daraya. Jatta means dreadlocks, huh? matted hair. And Dhara means wearing. So, Jatta Daraya, unto him who wears matted locks. Pinaka hastaya. Pinaka is the trident, and hasta is the hand. So him who holds a trident in his hand. The trident is his symbol. Why is that? Because everything in the universe comes in threes. We made a deep discussion on this in the early days of this channel about ontology and how an ontological triple is the sine qua non of being. To have being, you have to have a triple. I'm not going to explain that here, but go follow the link. Sanatanaya, unto him who is eternal, timeless. Time does not affect him. He is time. So, since time is coming from him, how can it affect him? He's the creator of time. Time, space, dimension, distance, form, everything is coming from him. Every most fundamental quality of existence is actually Shiva. So he is the, the eternal one and the one who is beyond time. Divyaya. He's divine. He's sacred. He is sacredness. That's the definition of what is sacred, is what belongs to or is associated with or of God. And he is the God. So everything about him, everything associated with him is divya, transcendental, sacred, beyond this material world. Devaya, unto the Lord, and Digambaraya. We covered that back in the video on the first verse. He's naked. He has no need of clothes because he has no ego. He has no material identity. 
he does expand as Rudra and comes into the universe of the three modes of nature as the mode of darkness, tamoguna, because he destroys the material creation at the end. But actually, even though externally he appears tamasic, internally he's shuddha, he's completely pure. And that's another one of his holy names, shuddhaya. Tasmai, therefore, yakaraya, the syllable ya or the letter ya represents shiva. All na ma shi va ya unto Lord Shiva. Uh, let us offer our respectful obeisances. Namaha. So that's the last verse. And now the final verse is actually not part of the prayer exactly, but this is what is called palashruti. Pala means fruit, and shruti means here. So just hear the fruit of chanting this mantra. Panchakasharamidam, this five-letter prayer, punyan, very auspicious, meritorious, and pure. It's holy and sacred. Therefore, yahat, one who, patet shiva, recites unto shiva, sangnidhau, nearby, in the presence of shiva, nearby shiva, nearby a shiva lingam or a shiva temple or even in the mental conception of Shiva. Shiva lokam avapnoti obtains or reaches Shiva's abode, Shiva loka. Shivena by Shiva's saha, power, powerful. Shiva is powerful, so by his power, modate. He enjoys a spiritual life eternally. So this is the fruit of chanting this prayer and of chanting the five-syllable mantra. And this is proclaimed again and again. It's not just Shankaracharya's idea. It's not certainly not my idea. <laughs> but it's proclaimed in the scriptures the Shiva Purana, the Linga Purana, every Shiva scripture proclaims very loudly that this five-syllable mantra is identical with Shiva and leads to liberation. Not slowly. <laughs> you don't have to wait till you die, but you will experience the liberation immediately. And what is that? People say, well, I chanted the mantra for like 15 minutes and nothing happened. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because you are immediately in touch with Shiva. This is Shiva consciousness. Shiva Chaitanya. Huh? Consciousness of Shiva. Shiva is present, and wherever Shiva is present is Shiva Loka or more exactly, the consciousness of one who is conscious of Shiva is Shiva Loka. He lives in the consciousness of his devotees, which taken all together is Shiva Loka, the spiritual world. And we're going to be doing a series called Dream Time in the near future. And uh, that is going to involve a detailed description of Shiva Loka, drawn from realization. And so that can be experienced immediately if you're looking in the right place. Don't look in the body, don't look in the material world. Don't expect, you know, that Shiva is going to mail you a check for a million dollars. <laughs> he doesn't care about trivial things like that. But as soon as we conceive 
of Shiva or chant the name of Shiva or do even the smallest little bit of devotional service to Shiva, he is present there. And that is the spiritual world. You have to be a bit philosophical, you know, to perceive this. It's not gross. It doesn't hit you over the head. It takes a while to realize it. I have to say, in my experience, in my whole life, every spiritual experience I've had has far outstripped my knowledge. And I had to study and purify myself and meditate and so on for years to catch the actual meaning, the actual significance and the nature of these experiences. And of course, uh, going all the way back to 1984 when Shakti came to me and gave me Shakti Pot and uh, opened up my third eye and I realized Brahman for the first time. Now, what is it now, 40 years later? <laughs> Almost. Next, this uh, coming autumn will be 40 years. Uh, now, every time I chant his name, I'm in that space. So what appeared as a, a momentary, well, it took weeks to wear off, but... Uh, it was still temporary back in 1984, has now become a more or less permanent state, accessible on demand, simply by chanting this five-syllable mantra, Aum Namah Shivaya. And so I chant every morning, every evening, at least a thousand names. And actually, I try to chant 24 hours a day. Really, I have nothing better to do there is nothing better you could do. And so I think the best approach to life is to structure your life in such a way that you have the freedom to do devotional service and chant these powerful mantras pretty much 24 hours a day. And you rarely or very little need to engage with the material world with your intelligence. I mean, simple tasks like sweeping the floor and washing the dishes, you can do without thinking. Keep your mind on Shiva. Keep your mind on his mantra. Keep repeating that mantra. Soon it will become a habit, and it will go on in your mind even when you're doing other things. So that is the state of Shiva Chaitanya, Shiva consciousness, and that is the doorway to the spiritual world, Shiva Loka, and that is where we want to go, not only after this body is finished, but even right now. Aum Tatsat, Aum Shaltihi Aum, Aum Shivaya.